This video is presented by the International Wheelchair Basketball Federation. The classification of wheelchair basketball players has evolved significantly over the past 20 years. No longer is it necessary to individually examine each player in a medical room. Players are now classified in their playing environment, on the basketball court and in their playing chair. This enables the classifier to assess each player as they will be when taking part in actual competitions. Wheelchair basketball players demonstrate varying trunk and arm movements when pushing their chair, dribbling, passing, shooting and rebounding due to their differences in muscle function. It is the observation of each player's functional capacity to complete these tasks that form the basis for a player's assignment to a particular class. Players are assigned a classification from 1, being the player with the least physical function, through to 4.5, being the player with the most physical function. These points are added during play to ensure a team does not exceed a predetermined maximum number of points on the floor at any one time. In IWBF international competitions, the maximum number of allowable points on the court is 14. By having a system of player classification and a rule of team balance, the IWBF equalizes the team's functional potential and ensures that the outcome of any game is directly related to the athletic ability and skill of players. This video is designed to introduce new classifiers as well as players and coaches to the IWBF player classification system and to help identify key functional abilities for players in classes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4.5. A key element of wheelchair basketball classification is the observation and assessment of each player's volume of action. The volume of action of a player is described as the limit to which a player can move voluntarily in any direction and, with control, return to the upright seated position holding the ball with both hands. Each class has a clearly defined maximum volume of action which the player may exhibit. The class 1 player shows very little controlled trunk movements in either the forward, vertical or sideways plane, usually as a result of paralysis of the trunk and leg muscles. They cannot pick up a ball with both hands from the floor and return to an upright position without having to rely on their arms to assist the movement. They cannot hold the ball with both hands outstretched in front of the face without inclining the head and trunk backwards as a counterbalance. They show very little ability to rotate their trunk towards either side. The class 2 player has partial volume of action in the vertical and forward planes, but virtually no volume of action in the sideways plane, usually as a result of paralysis of the lower trunk and leg muscles. They are able to hold the ball with both hands outstretched in front of the face as well as rotate their upper trunk over their lower trunk to face left or right without inclining the head and trunk backwards as a counterbalance. They are not quite able to pick up a ball off the floor with both hands and return to an upright sitting position without upper extremity assistance unless sitting with the knees significantly higher than the hips. The class 3 player has full volume of action in the forward and vertical planes, but virtually no volume of action in the sideways plane, usually due to lack of hip and thigh stabilization either from paralysis or high amputation of both legs. They can easily rotate their trunk over their pelvis to face left or right. They are able to pick up a ball off the floor with both hands and return to an upright sitting position without upper extremity assistance. They show difficulty leaning to either side and returning to upright sitting without using their upper extremities to assist the movement. The class 4 player has full volume of action in all but one direction. Usually due to limitations in one lower limb, the player has difficulty with controlled movement to one side.
They can easily rotate their trunk over their pelvis to face left or right. They are able to pick up a ball off the floor with both hands and return to an upright sitting position without upper extremity assistance. They show difficulty leaning to one side and returning to upright sitting without upper extremity support. The Class 4.5 player has full volume of action in all planes with no significant weakness in any direction. They can easily rotate their trunk over their pelvis to face left or right. They are able to lean forward as well as to either side and return to upright sitting without upper extremity assistance. Francisco Lugo of Mexico represents the classic example of a Class 1 player. In an upright position, when he starts out slowly, Francisco leans into the back of the chair and his head moves slightly forward and backward with each push. When Francisco pushes more quickly, however, he rests his upper body on his raised knees for support and must use his arms to return to the upright position once finished pushing. Notice that when stopping quickly or turning hard, the Class 1 player shows difficulty maintaining his trunk upright and will attempt to counterbalance by leaning head and shoulders hard back into the backrest. One hand is often required for support to avoid losing balance. Class 1 players usually dribble at the side of the chair and near the trunk, taking effort to maintain balance while dribbling, and pushing simultaneously. Some players may dribble in front of the footrest, resting their upper body on elevated knees for stability. Dribbling is difficult to execute for a Class 1 player, especially when moving the ball across the chair to change hands because of the lack of stability in their upper body. Even while stationary, when Jessica of Liegenhardt of Canada tries to change ball hands as she bounces the ball, you can see again how she must hang on for balance as she makes the switch. When passing the ball using one hand, the Class 1 player remains in contact with the back of the chair and holds the chair with the non-throwing hand for support. Lack of rotation of the trunk limits the ability to generate power in the pass. Forceful two-handed passing can only be made with the upper body pressing into the back of the chair as Jessica does here or by resting on elevated knees. When catching the ball, the Class 1 player shows difficulty reaching for the ball with both hands, away from the backrest. He cannot rotate his upper trunk to face the incoming ball unless stabilized with one hand. Class 1 players lean back over their backrest to avoid losing their balance when shooting. They cannot rotate their upper trunk to face the basket during one or two handed shots. They cannot lean into their shot when attempting a three point shot.
Class 1 players usually rebound with one hand while holding onto the wheelchair for balance with the other. When reaching directly overhead with two hands, Class 1 players show significant instability. Class 1 players are in a very unstable position whenever they have both hands off their wheels. As a result, a Class 1 player can easily be knocked off balance by minimal chair contact. Class 2 players have greater trunk stability when starting, pushing and stopping than Class 1 players. You will notice that the player's upper back is not always against the support of the chair, as Carolyn McLean of Great Britain demonstrates here. Carolyn leans forward when she starts out. Her upper trunk is off the back support of the chair. She has good acceleration and stops more solidly than a Class 1 player. She is able to lean into her pivot and does not need to use one upper extremity to maintain her balance. There is some loss of stability noted primarily at waist level. Class 2 players usually dribble the ball at the level of the front casters, near the wheelchair. They are able to dribble in front of the wheelchair when supported by high position of the knees as Stephanie Wheeler of USA does here. Her body remains more upright compared to a Class 1 player and her back is not always against the chair's back support. In a stationary position, the Class 2 player has much better balance when changing hands and remains more upright. Watch as Stephanie's trunk moves reasonably well as she dribbles from side to side. Remember that Jessica, the Class 1 player, had to keep checking her balance with her free hand when dribbling in this manner. Class 2 players are able to rotate their upper trunk over their lower trunk when passing the ball with one hand. They can lean their upper trunk forward when passing the ball with two hands. The lower trunk is not used to gain power and there is a loss of stability at the waist level upon release of the ball. The Class 2 player has fair stability when catching in an upright position. Notice that Stephanie's back is hardly pressed into the chair. Stephanie does have some balance problems when she attempts to catch a ball with two hands if it is thrown off to the side. She is able to rotate her trunk to catch an over the shoulder pass using some support from the back of the wheelchair.
the Class 2 player has the muscle power to resist the weight of the ball as it is lifted upwards for shooting. You can see here that Frédéric Guizot of France is not leaning back into his back wrist as he shoots. He can rotate the upper trunk towards the direction of the shot if supported by the backrest. When performing a layup, Class 2 players can lean forward in the direction of the basket. However, there is a mild to moderate loss of stability in the lower trunk during arm extension and follow through. Two-handed over-the-head rebounds can be executed by the Class 2 player, but these are often accompanied by a moderate loss of trunk stability. Two-handed rebounds to the side of the chair are rarely attempted and are accompanied by a significant loss of trunk stability. Class 2 players cannot preserve balance when forceful wheelchair contact is made, especially when in the act of shooting or rebounding. Paul Schulte of the United States of America is a good example of a Class 3 player. Typical of the Class 3 player, Paul is able to push the wheelchair forcefully with no loss of stability. The head, shoulders and trunk move forward and back as a single unit throughout the pushing action. There is no loss of stability in the motion. Notice that he follows through with his trunk more than a Class 1 or 2 player. He is quick and powerful and maintains good balance when stopping and pivoting. Karina Versloot of the Netherlands is a Class 3 player. She is able to dribble the ball in front of her casters with one hand while accelerating quickly and pushing forcefully with the other hand. She can take off and start the dribble, reaching maximum speed without loss of trunk stability. She can switch hands across the front of the chair without having to check her balance. The Class 3 player can make two and one-handed passes without relying on their wheelchair for support. Two-handed passing forward is performed with no loss of stability. Trunk rotation is used to gain leverage and power while performing a one-hand pass. Class 3 players are able to lean far forward to catch the ball. They can resume upright sitting easily after leaning on their knees. If the pass is wide to the side of the body, however, Class 3 athletes show great difficulty resuming upright sitting after completing the catch. Often, such catches will be accomplished with one hand while the opposite hand remains on the wheel for stability.
The Class 3 player does not show loss of trunk stability when shooting. They can rotate in the direction of the shot unsupported by the backrest. They are able to lean far forward to carry an underhand shot during a layup. Class 3 players are comfortable rebounding overhead with both hands, however they have limited stability reaching sideways and will typically hold the wheelchair for balance with the offhand, as Sean Norris of Australia demonstrates here. Unlike Class 1 and 2 players, Class 3 players are not very affected by minimum chair contact when they have both hands away from the wheels. They may lose stability if contact from the front is forceful, they will lose stability if contact is from the side. Class 3 athletes are able to tilt when supported by at least one hand on the wheel. Class 4 players show strong trunk movements with all maneuvering and wheelchair handling activity. They can push their wheelchair with rapid acceleration and maximal trunk excursions. They are very stable while pivoting and turning. Class 4 players are able to dribble well ahead of their knees while pushing with the other hand. They can move rapidly and change directions without loss of trunk stability. Class 4 players can flex, extend and rotate their trunk fully while making two-handed and one-handed passes. They show good balance when leaning forward and to at least one side when passing the ball. They have difficulty leaning fully to their weak side when passing the ball. Nabil Gaidon of Algeria is a class 4 player. Notice that he has difficulty catching on his weaker right side, but is very stable when catching a ball thrown off to his strong left side. Class 4 athletes are able to lean forward and to at least one side when shooting. They have difficulty maintaining their balance as they attempt to lean to their weak side to perform such an action.
Class 4 players are comfortable rebounding with both hands overhead, without support of their wheelchair. They're able to lean strongly to one side to rebound with both hands. They have difficulty performing this action on their weak side. Class 4 players are hardly affected by chair contact when they have both hands off their wheels unless the contact occurs on their weak side. Class 4 players are able to tilt with their hands off the wheels. Similar to Class 4 players, Class 4.5 players show strong trunk movements with all maneuvering and wheelchair handling activity. They can push their wheelchair with rapid acceleration and maximal trunk movements. They are very stable while pivoting and turning. Class 4.5 players are able to dribble well ahead of their knees while pushing with the other hand. They can move rapidly and change directions without loss of trunk stability. Class 4.5 players can lean their trunk and make two-handed passes easily on either side. They show complete trunk stability throughout the motion. Marie Amimoto of Japan is a Class 4.5 player. She is very stable when catching a ball thrown wide to either side of her chair. Class 4.5 players can move the trunk forcefully in all directions when shooting, as Piotr Luczynski of Poland demonstrates here. In particular, they are able to lean equally well to both sides. Mariki Adermann, a class 4.5 player from Germany, possesses sufficient function in her legs to push them apart, giving her excellent stability in the sideways plane. Chair contact, unless it is very hard, will have little effect on a class 4.5 player.
Similar to Class 4 players, Class 4.5 players can tilt with their hands off their wheels. Whether you are a new classifier, player, or coach, we hope that this video has been a helpful introduction to the IWBF's player classification system, and that it has taught you to identify functional abilities for athletes in Class 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4.5. The IWBF player classification system is a living system based on the basic principles of observation of the wheelchair basketball skills that the players perform. In order to be a competent classifier, it is of the utmost importance to know all the wheelchair basketball skills and how they are performed by the different classes of players. A classifier must not just know the skills and observe them, but also regularly practice the art of classification. 